My very first solo show was in Washington, Washington, D.C., at the Diane Brown Gallery. And a terrific show, lots of attention critically and through collectors and everything. It was just amazing. So my second solo show was back in Washington, D.C. My third solo show ended up being in Palo Alto, California. And I'm, I'm thinking, what's going on? I haven't even had a show in Canada yet. So I was gaining a really good, solid reputation in the States without having even had a single solo show in Canada. Now, keep in mind, I'm 26 years old when all this is going on. So it was very, very heady times. And uh, I just thought, like, this was the smartest thing I ever did, was getting involved with this art world. <laughs> So most recently, we found ourselves into this kind of cloistered time with COVID-19. And um, it made me think of some time that I spent in Florence, in Italy. And at that time, I was really, really moved by the Fra Angelico paintings in San Marco. And um, at San Marco, uh, it's a monastery. And inside each one of the monks' cells, Fra Angelico did a little painting that monks essentially would retire to these cells and stay and, and fast and meditate for 30 days. So the whole idea of them being cloistered and the kind of cloistering that I've felt too made me think about the possibility of making some paintings that were that, that just kind of had that sort of feeling of meditation and contemplation of being with something that could perhaps even possibly give off a kind of spiritual feeling. As an artist, though, as an artist, and I I was watching a, an interview with Bob Dylan just the other day, and I've been thinking about these thoughts a lot myself too, because I, I constantly feel like I'm evolving to a place um, where, you know, I'm going to make better pictures this year than I did last year. That things are kind of constantly evolving. I don't see myself as being able to kind of stay in one place all the time. I really have to keep evolving. And in the, the interview, uh, Bob Dylan says that he feels like he's constantly in a state of becoming. And I felt that very much too. Like I feel like I'm constantly in a state of becoming. So every picture is just another step stone toward that becoming. And you know, I, I understand now that hopefully I never feel like I get there. <laughs> So I was really interested in geometrical abstraction and and uh, not so much figuration. Like um, I had, uh, I just saw more challenges for me in geometrical abstraction. I could be, I could be more creative. It 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 lent itself to my sensibilities, you know, as a painter and as a person. And so I I started out um, professionally, kind of working in a way of establishing a ground on a painting. And the ground is almost very intuitive. There's a lot of chance involved in the background of the painting. 
the background of the painting tends to set up the mood and the intuition and the chance that's involved. I contrast that with very discursive elements that are placed on the surface. They're placed on the surface in a, in a kind of a, a hierarchy, designed in such a way as to indicate space within the picture plane. And the whole purpose of making these pictures is, is to give the viewer a real perceptual kind of opportunity uh, by looking at the work and seeing space within the picture plane. I come up with a number of different kind of structural strategies throughout my career and that offered up new potentials in terms of, of, of paintings and imagery. But at the same time, there's this very similar kind of back and forth um, kind of contrast within the elements and the ground. And <clears throat> I think contrast is a way in painting that we really create strength. And it can be contrast of color, it can be contrast of scale, it can be contrast of imagery. Um, and, and that's how we actually manage to kind of maintain and create strength in a picture. You can augment that contrast or you can make that contrast very, very subtle. In 1969, I end up going to OCA at the time, Ontario College of Art. It's changed its name a couple of times since then, and so I've actually been connected to what is now OCAD University for 50 years. There was a one period where a lot of the faculty had been fired and a whole new group of faculty had been brought in, and that was under Dennis Burton who was the chair at that particular time. And he brought in all of the, all the artists that I had been looking at in Arts Canada Magazine and all the exhibitions that I've been seeing. Now those people became my teachers and mentors. It was absolutely pivotal to me becoming who I became. Going to completing OCAD and going on to uh, a career in the art world. I was very, very fortunate to meet up with another one of the young instructors that I had been privileged to uh, kind of learn with was David Balduc. Chance, just by chance, I ran into him coming out of the museum subway station one day and he asked me, hey, are you by any chance looking for a studio? And I had a studio at the time but it was essentially going nowhere. And so I just jumped on that and said to David, yes, yes, absolutely. I can be there tomorrow. David was regularly visited by art critics and curators and art dealers and collectors from all across the country looking at his work. And of course, they would see mine at the same time. The next thing you know, I received a call from David Mervish. And David came over, looked at my work and said to me, um, would you like to be represented by my gallery? Uh, I met Ron Moore in 1983. And I, I met Ron Moore at Gory Rayner's studio on Spadina. And Ron said at that time, gee, I'd be really interested in showing some of your work. Uh, and it's been a, I believe when he closed his gallery in Toronto, I had been with Ron for 30 years. It's interesting again that uh, the way things have emerged that he's involved with 13th Street and uh, I can't wait to get that all going again. Mm -hmm. 